Okay, next tutorial. This time I'm dressed up as, let's say, Reverse Phantom of the Opera if he was steampunk and he fell down the stairs. I don't know. <laughs> I just had a lot of fun doing this. I, it's one of those kind of makeups where I make it up as I go along, except this time I made the props and got the costume ready and everything together, and I knew I wanted to do a makeup inspired by what I had put together. Obviously the makeup is relatively minimal than what I usually do, because I really wanted the costume to kind of pop out, so I hope this is okay. So, if you'd like to learn how to do this makeup, stay tuned. Okie dokie, so to start this makeup off, I'm going to be blocking out just one of my eyebrows. That's right, I said one eyebrow. Sounds weird, doesn't it? But just go with me on this. <laughs> we don't need to block out both eyebrows because this is the only part of the face that's gonna be on show. This is a new thing for me. I just wanted to try something out, so hopefully it'll work, we shall see. So to show you how to block out your eyebrows, I'll pop a link on the screen up there that will take you to a video that I did in the past to teach you how to do that, just so I don't have to show it in this video to make it go a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna go block out this single eyebrow and we'll go from there. So there we are. So the next step is going to involve liquid latex. So it's worth noting that when I blocked my eyebrows out with a layer of spirit gum, then synthetic wax, I also went over it with another layer of spirit gum just to really seal it off to make sure it's completely safe to pop latex over the top of it. So I'm going to take my liquid latex and a sponge, dip the sponge in the latex and apply that over my eyebrow. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to do an angry brow. It's going to be very strange to do it on just one eye, but hopefully it'll look okay. You're not going to see much detail really, just above the eyebrow. So it doesn't need to be particularly neat. It doesn't have to have like perfect edges really. It's just more about building up the angry brow so it comes roughly down to about here, but we'll build it up as we go along. So I'm just going to start with the first coat of latex now. Then we're just going to let that dry, then repeat the process about three times. So then we can start building up the brow with some tissue. So I've got some regular tissue here that I've already separated into the thinner halves and I'm going to be working in really, really little strips with this. Nothing too much bigger than that. Then we're going to pop some latex down just in the corner for now. Then I can pop the tissue over the top of that, press it in, and then apply some more latex. So the purpose of this is to build up that brow to make it look really, really angry looking. It's gonna look really strange having just one angry brow though. <laughs> So we want this area to be quite big, but we do want it to fade off. So I'm gonna do about six coats of that tissue and latex method, letting it dry in between, of course, and then about three coats towards the peak of the eyebrow, and then maybe one or two at the end, just so it blends off into the skin. So the shape we want is gonna be curved under and then taper off upwards. So there we are, one angry brow, half. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about this edge here because you're not gonna see that in the final look. It's mainly this area here that needs to have the decent blending. So whilst this is drying, I'm gonna take some more latex on a sponge and apply that just in this general area on this side of the face, not too close to the eye. We just wanna go around here and maybe over the lip a little tiny bit. Okay, so once it's dry, it should look something like this. So the purpose of the latex is to build up a really nice base for some fake teeth to adhere to. So much like when I did my bite makeup, I made some fake teeth out of thermoplastic gels, which looks something like this. I do believe I got these off of Amazon a very long time ago. The idea is you pop a few of them in some boiling hot water and then take it out really carefully, obviously, and you're able to shape it into anything you like. And shortly after it will harden back into its original state. So I've made myself some fake sharp teeth, about 30 of them, which is a little bit overkill, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. I've made them in five sizes, so really small, starting to get a little bit larger there. Then we have some medium sized teethies. Yes, I said teethies. <laughs> until they start getting roughly this size. So to stick my fake teeth down, I'm gonna be using some Telesis 8 that I got from the makeuparmory.com. It's a really strong adhesive that I really love. I'll pop that link in the description bar below if you wanted to check them out. You can of course use Pro Stick or Spirit Gum or any other kind of prosthetic adhesive, but this is the one I'm gonna be using for these particular teeth. So I'm just gonna go really slowly, start in the middle and then work my way up the face. So there we are, I have changed the plan just a little bit. So instead of getting smaller as it goes up, I started it getting quite small, then getting bigger towards the cheek and then getting smaller again as it goes up, just so it looks like it's kind of poking out of the skin and the mouth is trying to get bigger and bigger. So then I'm gonna take a cotton bud, dip it in the latex and then go around each of the teeth quite heavily. So it makes it look like they're peering out of the skin and it really does secure them in place. Thank you. 
So when that's all nice and dry, we can start colouring in the inside of the mouth. So I'm going to be using a chameleon black watercolour. I'm going to apply it all around the inside of the fake mouth, going over my lips as well. Don't worry too much about the edge because we're going to have fake blood going around that afterwards. I'll be stopping the colour roughly around this area because that's going to be blended off later. I'm then going to take a watercolour by Superstar. This is in ivory. I'm just using this one because it's a paler version of my own skin tone. And I'm going to apply that to this area of the face. So then I'm going to be taking a black cream by Makeup Forever. This is part of their flash palette, but you can get the black cream separately. And I'm going to apply that onto my eyelid and underneath my eye, then blend the colour away. I'm also going to be using some MAC Fluid Line in Black Track for the water lines of my eye. I'm then going to take a red Makeup Forever cream and I'm just going to sweep that underneath the eye and then blend that away. Then taking a medium fluffy brush and some fake blood, I'm using fake blood by Superstar, this is their stage blood. I'm going to apply that going around the entire fake mouth, staggering it as I go so it's not just a neat line, it needs to go up and down, trickle down in random places. I'm also going to brush it down each of the teeth. And then just taking a clean sponge and I'm just sweeping the colour away towards the edge. So then on to the next step and the reason why I've only done half the face, which I guess by now you would have seen from the introduction, but hey ho, we'll just ignore that. <laughs> and that is to talk about the mask. So I actually got this beautiful half mask off of Amazon. It's really what inspired this makeup because I thought it'd be really interesting to start off with a costume piece and then work around it. So for various times of doing this makeup, I've been applying the mask just to make sure that I'm leaving myself enough space. I just thought it was a really cool steampunky Phantom of the Opera kind of mask and I thought it'd be fun. I have actually coloured it a little bit and added a few more fine details, but I think it was really cool looking. So the idea at the end is to apply the mask and it should hopefully fit around the smile that I've made. I just thought it'd be fun to do kind of a reverse Phantom of the Opera where the mask is actually covering the human part. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> but as my natural eye is going to be on show through this area here, I am going to paint this area in a black watercolour. Kind of like a superhero effect when they put the mask on. It makes the eye look a lot darker and it kind of seeps back into the mask. So I'm just going to take the black chameleon watercolour again and just colour in the eye area. So there we are, so the edges don't need to be neat and the overall shape doesn't really matter too much as long as it's covering the general eye area if you are using a mask like this. So then I'm just going to slick my hair all the way back and then pop on my mask and we'll see if everything lines up. I'm also going to apply some of the fake blood on a sponge to my ear as well because it looks a little bit too clean that area for me I think. That feels, and I can't stress this enough, horrible. <laughs> the things I do for my channel. So when I set out to do this makeup, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted it to be costume heavy and the makeup was going to be relatively minimal. I say minimal, you know what I mean, compared to my usual makeups. <laughs> I wanted to for once kind of like create a character based off of a costume. I wanted to kind of do a subtle, subtle <laughs> makeup that kind of helps complete the costume, if that makes sense. Next, I want to talk to you about the hat that I've made for this look. So don't judge this too badly because I made this last night, but here we are. Yay! But what I did was I stuck some cogs to the outside of a mini top hat, I popped on my steampunk glasses and added a few little extra accessories that I also got off of Amazon and some feathers. So with all that said, I think the look's pretty much complete because I don't want to add any more detail to it because otherwise it will start closing the face off and because I've only got a small area to work with as it is. So I'm going to go pop on my hat, pop on my costume and we'll see what the overall look looks like. And there we go! That's my look, officially complete. So I finished the look off, as I said, by popping on the hat that I made. I also popped on a costume that I got off of Amazon.com as well. It's kind of a mad scientist costume, I just thought it went really well with this makeup. And yeah, so there's not much else to say about this look really. There's a lot of detail in the costume and the props that I've used and hopefully I've made it come together with this half makeup. It's kind of like a reverse Phantom of the Opera where the normal side is hidden underneath the mask. Almost as if this is like a race of creatures that look like this 
that's slowly turning human. I think we're gonna go with that. Ha! I can honestly say I had so much fun doing this makeup. It was so weird and fun to try something new where I like make the props before I know what I'm gonna do with the makeup and then have it all come together like on the spot. I just thought it was really fun to do. I did also decorate an old pirate gun with loads of different cogs and painted bits silver and whatnot, but I think this might be a little bit overkill. Ha! So thanks everyone so, so much for watching this video. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe and all that jazz. And yeah, so until next time, bye fluffies!